Good afternoon, everyone. You know who this is. This is the Yankee, the real deal messiah here with you on this Wednesday afternoon, August 28, 2024 here. And of course, we are going to be getting into the tropics here today. And there is a lot of stuff to really get into this. So we're going to start it off here. And I'm going to start it off uh, Western Gulf of Mexico here. And you can see from uh, the satellite imagery. You can see that we have um, quite a bit in the way of thunderstorm activity um, occurring over the western Gulf of Mexico. And the cause for this widespread convection, there's an upper level low pressure system. And because of this, any tropical development will be very slow to occur. And you can see a lot of rain over here. And this is where we are pointing over here. And might want to add a little bit of this bloop of rain here as well. And as I've mentioned, even though any tropical development is expected to be slow to occur, uh, this disturbance over the western Gulf of Mexico, this is something that still needs to be watched closely. And I want to show you some of the models here. So um, we're going to go in and I might go to the GFS and show you the GFS here. So the GFS, you can see not showing really any tropical developments here. And this goes at least into 240. Now the new European, let's get to that. You don't really see that convection. And what we want to see um, when it comes to the the vorticity is you want to see that colored. You want to see that tropical vorticity here. And you don't see it here in the European. But one of the main things about this weather model here, it's the icon. And I'm going to tell you why the icon is something that we are going to be watching here. So the icon, this goes up to 180. You see what happens here? The icon model, um, by the time we get into Sunday, and let me try to rewind it over here, people. So let's go in Sunday morning. You can see that there is some vorticity right over here, and it's a 1009 millibar system right over here. So this would be more of a tropical depression and then it's going to try to move in and try to become a tropical storm so anywhere in this area and this goes right into the 180 like i said remember these are the warmest waters um in the gulf of mexico so this is near uh the middle and lower texas coast now the other exception is some of the ensemble model guidances which seems to suggest that there's a 30% chance, and I actually do have the ensemble guidances. Um, I do have the GFS, and you can see the GFS is not really showing anything when it comes to this. Uh, European, we'll get to the European in just a bit because I want to talk about what we're seeing in the Lesser Antilles and what that future, that system right now that's in... The Atlantic Basin. We'll talk more about that. So even if this area of disturbed weather does not develop, it's going to bring plentiful amount of rain from southern Louisiana through southeastern Texas over the next several days. So I'm going to show you the map over here, and you can see that the map... Uh, ooh, I'll highlight this for you guys. Look at this whole plop of rain right here. This is where a lot of that rain, 5 to 10 inches of rainfall, can be expected. So, bottom line with this is there's enough evidence in the data to suggest that the area of disturbed weather over the western Gulf of Mexico is something to keep an eye on. And... It should be noted that if a tropical system does develop over the western Gulf of Mexico this weekend or during early next week, 
it will be very slow moving due to a very weak steering winds. That's what you're seeing in the icon, and that's why the icon. And let's go back to the icon again and show you that the steering winds, as I mentioned, um, very weak and. This means where exactly the system moves is going to be important in determining heavy rainfall potential. So a system that sits offshore off of the Texas or Louisiana coast, which I'm going to highlight right here, wouldn't be a big deal in terms of excessive rainfall. But on the other hand, a tropical system that slowly moves along the western or northern Gulf Coast, that should produce an excessive rainfall problem. And it's something that we have to keep an eye on. So um, I just wanted to point that out when it comes to what is happening in the western Gulf of Mexico. Now, the other system that we're watching, and I want to talk about this, this is where we're going to get a lot into in this video here. Um, you have this area of disturbed weather located halfway between the coast of Africa and the Lesser Antilles. So this is something that we're watching right over here. Um, you got another tropical system coming off of Africa. We won't really get into that. Um, and this is an item that needs to be watched over the next several days. And... Even though this disturbance does need to be watched closely, the big key is development over the next several days. And that development is going to be slow due to how strung out and disorganized it is. And you can see that right here um, in the radar imagery. But with that being said, uh, the model support for this disturbance... Um, to eventually develop seems to be gradually growing. So this is the GFS model right here. I'm going to show you the GFS, the European, and the Canadian. So here we go with um, the GFS model. And let's, as we always like to do, fast forward it. I'm actually going to put this, there we go. I want to put it right here. You can see basically what happens is there's no development right here until we get to right here about 216. I'm going to show you this right here, the 1006. Look what happens. It's already in the Western Caribbean. Look what it does. By the time you get into days 10 to an 11, it's, it's in the Bahamas. Probably as a weak tropical storm. Um, that's what the model in, um, bias is putting out over here. That this is going to be, um, like I said, that's way too far out. The Canadian model, now the Canadian model, let's get to the GCMM model right here. Um, this is the most aggressive of the models. And what the model is showing us right now, look at, look at this right here. There's our storm developing. It's showing that this uh, disturbance is reaching the Leeward Islands on Tuesday, possibly as a tropical storm. And beyond this, the Canadian model forecasts the system to become a powerful hurricane uh, in the Bahamas around next Friday and next Saturday. And this is where it's going to go at 240 right here. So the big question is... Does this storm kind of move up to the north like this? This is what the Canadian's probably doing. It's probably doing something like this and having this as a southeastern threat to the Carolinas. Again, too soon 
to talk about it. European, let's get to our King Euro, as we all like to call him. This is what the King Euro is doing here. See what the Euro does? It shows no vaticity. Now that other storm that you just saw, that big blob that's getting off of the African coast, it's showing up here on this model uh, 10 days from now as a tropical storm. Now, who knows what happens with this? Um, it's going to be interesting to see, but you see, since there's no vorticity over here, the European... Like I said, it's not showing anything. Now, when you're looking at the ensembles here, and this is just the GEFS ensembles here, um, it has a handful of members that is showing development by the time this disturbance reaches the uh, northeastern Caribbean around the middle part of next week. You can see all of the spaghetti plots um, when it comes to this. So uh, let's try to... Um, Rewind it here. So this is Let's see where we are with this. So this would be So this is Tuesday of next week you see the the handful of members of the G the ensembles This is right here. This is from that other wave that's coming off of Africa right here. So um, European ensemble my model guidance um, and this is just the long-term thing that I want to show you. This is the long-term resolution of uh, the European. So here we go. Uh, let me just rewind it and go into um, next Tuesday. So let's see where we are with this. Yep. So I'll go around Tuesday around 2 o'clock. It does have a fair number of members, and want you to pay. And this is what I want you to pay attention to: is this. And you can see, um, the Gulf of Mexico disturbance right here does have one member that actually develops it into a tropical storm. So it does show development of this. Now beyond this, and. This is the interesting part of this model here. It shows, and this is what it's doing here. It There's some members that do take it into the Bahamas. There's that one member that actually wants to take that and actually kind of moves it up. But you see this right here? Look at all of this. Handful of members in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And this is around September 7th through September 8th. And there's a few members that actually forecast this to be a strong hurricane as well. So, um... Let's see where we go here. Um, you got one member right here that takes it just offshore of New England. And then you got the the one member uh, that's doing the Canadian uh, the run from the Canadian, which I think is more going to be from the Carolinas. That's what I was indicating on that. And then this is from that African wave that's coming off. So it's indicating that this African wave is going to be a fish storm. So assuming if this does develop, this could be Gordon that we could be seen as a fish storm. So my thoughts on this is I do think that any development that occurs is going to be very slow for the next several days as this disturbance moves to the west. So let me just go through the NHC. It does have a 20% chance of development within the next seven days. And this 
uh, disturbance is going to reach the Leeward Islands around Tuesday. And for those of you that live in the Leeward Islands, you got to continue to keep close tabs on the progress of this particular tropical wave as it could affect you Tuesday of next week. Now, at the minimum, I could see this disturbance producing some very squally weather across the Leeward Islands on Tuesday. And it's quite possible that it could be a tropical storm at that point. We're just going to have to wait and see with more consistency from the models of what's going to happen. But I want to point out that, let's just say, for example, and I'm going to try to use a track like this, that the longer this disturbance takes to organize and develop, the further west that this system will track in longitude. So this is why we're seeing the longer range ensemble model guidances showing this system to cross the Caribbean and get into the northwestern Caribbean where it can significantly develop late next week and head for the Gulf of Mexico. So that's one of the things that I'm kind of looking at is a track like this um, when it comes to whatever this next storm is going to be, though. But for now, though, uh, don't be overly concerned about it or worried because it is just a disturbance that's out there. Like I said, this has 20% chance of developing into a tropical storm. But we have to monitor this over the next several days. Um, but anyways, um, right now, I do have a video planned for tomorrow. So, if anything comes out from the models overnight and tomorrow, we'll definitely talk about it. Of course, we're not going to talk about this because I think this is just... Um, this is some kind of disturbed weather. It's really nothing that's going to be worried about. Um, it's up there in the Atlantic Ocean. But this is the Gulf of Mexico. And this is what we're going to be focusing on the next several days. So until then, I'm out, guys. Um, enjoy, the rest of your um, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Um, stay safe. Keep your family safe. Remember, God is with us, protects us, and keeps us safe. All right? So long, everyone. Bye-bye.